Hi, my name's Jordan and I run my small business, Jordan Lily Designs. Today is very exciting. Kernocraft have invited me to share a day in the life of a jeweller. Usually I kind of faff around on Instagram a bit, so this feels a little bit different, a little bit more grown up. I'm really excited to bring you on yeah, my day today, what I'm up to. So yesterday was one of my big making days, so everything that was like outstanding got made up and parceled up and taken to the post office this morning. Today I've got a little bit of admin to do and then some custom orders that I need to check in on and then a little bit of making and packaging this afternoon. But yeah, I will take you along and show you a little bit about what it's like um, at Jordan Lily HQ, as I call it, ironically, because it's just the spare bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's a good idea actually, I'm going to show you a little bit of a tour of my workshop. So this is where the magic happens, I'm deliberately not going to show you the messy parts, um, but this is my tidy desk where all of my clean stuff gets done, so I print labels with Norman, my label machine over there, um, I sort out postage with my computer, over here we've got a little packaging nook. These are my Bible verse cards that go out with my Christian jewellery and some more packaging bits over here and my camera. Yeah, I find it really important to keep like clean stuff and messy stuff separate. This is Susie, my snake plant. She's a new addition, um, which I'm hoping very much to keep alive. And then over here, we've got my Rascog with loads of making stuff um, and my messy side. So this is the silversmithing side. Um, it's where all of the jewellery gets made. I've got like a little soldering setup over here. Um, this is a steel block under there, bench peg one, bench peg two, and would I be a jeweller <laughs> without, or any kind of maker, without having some kind of pegboard? But honestly, it's so easy to have everything kind of like to hand. I've got lots of pliers here, kitchen towel, ring sizes, files, and then up here, just in the jellyfish, and my Fordham drill, which was a kind of business Christmas present to myself. And honestly, I don't know how <laughs> I survived without it. And then over here, these are my storage drawers where I keep all of my silver. So this is all kind of like sheet silver. In here, we've got things like jump rings and findings and discs and gemstones and then this is very exciting this is my um custom order draw and stuff for the diploma course that i'm starting in september so first on my list today is a little bit of admin um i've got to mark my orders as dispatched check in on the website make sure that's up to date and then i've got an email to write so let me take you with me it's really hard not to show you any GDPR breaches <laughs> for dispatching things but it's as easy as that we mark as dispatched and then that all feeds back through to Etsy and my Shopify um, so those are dispatched. So the next job on my admin to-do list is to write an email. So this is going to be a bit of a June update. Um, it's less than a week now until I get my second Covid jab, um, which is very exciting. But <laughs> the first one I had kind of wiped me out for a couple of weeks, which wasn't really a surprise. I have um, chronic illness so my immune system is a little bit dodgy to begin with. So I decided that this time round would be a good time to take some holiday this year, the first bit of holiday um, I've had this year. Not that I'm going anywhere, but I'm based in Cornwall, so Cornwall's pretty great. <laughs> I'm down by the Lizard uh, Peninsula, so like right down at the bottom. But I need to let my email gang know that I'll be taking some time off um, and really be clear on those dates of when they can order and when I'll be back. Um, and I've got a couple of other exciting things um, that I'm filling them in on. So yeah, that's, that's my next job. I have some templates already set up. Um, so this is my newsletter one which has got my cute little header and then yep I need to actually 
<laughs> fill it in and add a gif at the end. This always takes me longer than I think it will but as always I do love a gif in my email so most of my time is spent on Givy <laughs> trying to find cute ones. So this is about my delayed dispatch, I'm taking some time off, I'm speaking at Chifley Givens Creative Christianity Summit so we've got some information about that and I'm also being featured in Elysian Creatives magazine this month so very exciting um, and there's the puffer. Okay, so I just need to schedule that to go out tomorrow and then I think that's it for my admin. I might have a couple of emails that I need to reply to, but then I'm going to have some lunch and get making this afternoon, which is, I don't want to say much more exciting, um, but probably much more exciting. <laughs> Okay, so before I get started on my orders, this afternoon I've got a couple of custom orders which I need to check in on. One of them is currently, hopefully, <laughs> in the post back from the Assay office. It's been off to be hallmarked, but the postman hasn't been today yet, so I'm waiting um, for that, hopefully. Um, but she has got these gorgeous um, glass cabochons that she wanted setting into a couple of bracelets. So I should have some stone setting to do when that comes in the post um, and some final polishing. And the other thing is a little enamel charm that a lady would like putting on a bracelet. So I'll show you that in a minute. This is a tiny little enamel charm which a lady i think she said her daughter had picked it up from like a flea market kind of market store so really sentimental it does have a 95 on the back so it should be silver and it's got these little kind of half round links on there so we'd like to put it on a bracelet but it's enamel so from the research that i've done i can't put a torch near this without melting it so one of today's jobs is to try and figure out how best i can turn this into a bracelet without damaging it so i'm thinking possibly threading some wire through the back and creating loops um, that can go onto chain that way or possibly like a small jump ring i've got um some of whoops this stuff techno flux which stops heat kind of heating up pieces so I might be able to solder near it and use that paste to protect the enamel but basically I've blocked out some time today to do some sketches and have a play and see what we might be able to do with this one so that's my next job. some wire some 0.8 wire I did wonder if that was going to be strong enough the 1.2 did fit but actually this is quite robust and I think the 1.2 would have been too hard to tie neatly so this is kind of a mock-up of how I would attach it to a bracelet using like wire wrapping basically to create little jump rings at the end so before I wrap around here I would add in some chain either a fine chain like this or something a bit chunkier and attach it to a bracelet that way I think with it being enamel I don't really want to go near it with a flame and risk damaging it so I think that is going to be a good option for my customer I'm going to send over some photos and yeah some sketches of ideas of what it could look like like that but i think yeah the 0.8 wire has worked really well for that and 
I'd rather not go near it with a flame if need be and that way if I do solder any jump rings um, or catches onto the bracer I can do that without this being anywhere near it <laughs> and then I can add in the chain to those loops before I finish them off. So I think that is going to be a good option. We just need to confirm what kind of style of chain she might like, whether it is something like this or something a bit chunkier, but I'm glad that's worked. That's been like in the back of my brain for a few days thinking how am I going to work my way around that and how, how am I going to be able to do that? But I think this is going to be the way forward, so that's very exciting. So yeah, I'm going to let her know and then crack on with the orders that I've got to make today. So I am just about to start today's orders. They are all written up on the trusty whiteboard. If it's not on the whiteboard, it doesn't get done. That is my like one place where all of the information gets put for a day's making. So I've got quite a variety of things going out today. I've got some beady bracelets with stamped charms. Um, I've got a custom stamped ring, which has some personalization, which is really fun. And then I've got some earrings and studs and a sideways cross bracelet to make as well so i will show you as i go so when i've got a few things to do i always try and kind of do the same things at the same time so for any wire that needs cutting for these pieces i tend to measure it all out at the same time cut it at the same time solder it at the same time and that way kind of batching those activities it helps get them done a little bit quicker. So these are measurements for my star and moon drops, my sideways cross bracelet, and then these will be for my large circle studs that I'm finishing up today. Operation Protect the Manicure. <laughs> So for a really accurate day in the life of Jordan, um, I've dropped something on the floor again. So my next five, 10 minutes will be spent searching for a tiny piece of silver on the floor. This happens a lot. I found it. Okay, so next on my list, I have got some stamping to do. Um, I do a lot of stamped charms for necklaces and bracelets, and I've got a ring to personalise as well. I think for me, stamping has been one of the trickiest things to get to grips with. There were a lot of mistakes and a lot of discs um, and rings and things that end up in the scrap pot. But thankfully with silver, that just means they can be melted down and recycled and made into something else. But yeah, I've got a wave charm and an initial and a hope charm today. Um, the Hope Charm is new for this year and has been really popular, which is nice. I think after the year we've had, everybody could do with holding on to a little bit of hope. So I think my top tips for stamping has been to anneal 
things first to make sure that they are nice and receptive to the metal stamp. So this is my wave stamp. And then I need an initial stamp, the letter L, it'll be backwards on here. And then my little stamps for the word hope. And I would also say <laughs> it's really worth getting a big brass hammer. So I think this is two pounds it might be three pounds it's seriously hefty um but that means you can give it one really big hit and that should stop any like bouncing of designs if you can get it in one go that's really what you want to aim for it can also be really handy to line up your letter stamps before you're stamping to make sure that you get them in the right order because i have made that mistake before you know when you're in the zone you can forget how to spell everything So because this has been annealed, it looks super grubby, as does all of my jewellery that has been torched at some point at the moment. These will all need to go in the pickle to bring them out as a bright white. This little pot of goodies is ready to go in my tumbler. I have blackened the charms and the ring and strengthened the earring posts on these. And yeah, they'll go in the tumbler for a little while and I will see you on the other side. Okay, you are very kind of precariously balanced at the moment. Um, but the last thing I have to do is make up some of my silver bead bracelets. Um, these have been really popular, which is lovely. So I try and keep these um, bead bracelets in stock as much as I can. I kind of sit down with Netflix on and thread them. But quite often <laughs> that doesn't happen um, and I have to make them on the day. So I've got my elastic and I've got this traveller's bead tray which is super helpful because it's got the measurements along the bottom so i can open this without spilling them i cut my elastic longer than i need it like so i give it a little bit of a pre-stretch so that it doesn't stretch too much and make it really gappy and then I add on my little bead stopper, which is a super helpful tool, and then get threading. <laughs> so it's a bit of a um, time consuming task, um, but it's kind of therapeutic, I quite enjoy it. But what I thought I would do whilst I'm doing this is tell you a little bit about my kind of business story and how I got started. So Jordan Lily Designs isn't actually my first online business. I did have a crochet business for a while um, which was on Etsy and I went <laughs> on a local sea glass and silver workshop I think it was summer 2018 and just absolutely loved it I made I think I made a pair of earrings I made a ring which the like bezel setting of the sea glass was absolutely perfect um, but the ring band didn't solder very well to the bezel so it's not the best um, but I enjoyed it so much that I was immediately like right I want to do this so by the autumn of 2018 I had set up my shop um, and I was on Etsy 
to begin with. Then I applied to be a seller on Cheerfully Given, which is a marketplace for Christian gifts and makers and cards and all sorts of things. Um, because that's when I started introducing the Bible verse cards that I do. So a lot of my pieces are quite minimalist and simple, but the Bible verse cards mean that they have a deeper meaning for people who have a faith, which I really enjoy. So that has been like a huge part of my business and continues to be a huge part of my business. So I'm on Etsy and Cheerfully Given and then might have been 2019 I set up my own website um which I absolutely love um <laughs> I love creating graphics for it and working out like the marketing side of things how to get people to my website because that's a big thing with like Etsy and Cheerfully Given they already have lots of people on there who are looking to buy when it's your own website it can be a little bit of a tumbleweed in the beginning um but I really have enjoyed learning that side of things. So I still do sea glass pieces. That was like one of the main things that I started with. But I also do stamped jewellery. I do personalised things like the ring I've made today. Um, or custom bar necklaces with stamped messages on. I do my beaded bracelets with charms. I make... Um, quite a few like celestial themed things. I really love all things like space and stars. So that theme really comes through in my jewellery. And then recently, just last month, I launched my gemstone necklaces. So I do gemstone rings and gemstone stud earrings. Um, but I launched the necklaces last month, which have gone down really well. And they're so pretty. <laughs> I definitely want to keep one for myself. Um, it's just kind of working out which one that I like the best because I kind of like all of them the best. But I've got my eye on either the Amethyst one or the Onyx one. I think those might be my favourite. But yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> I was going to say me in a nutshell. That's a little bit about my business story. Yeah, it's, it's a bit crazy, really. Definitely last year with lockdown. I know it's been so different for everyone, but for me, because I'm an online business, um, and I was still allowed to go to the post box and to the post office to send orders. My kind of like business grew a lot last year. And um, so that's been quite a thing to adapt to. But it's really cool. And yeah, I just love, I love being able to make things for people that have um, meaning or when you see being like tagged on Instagram with things. It's just a really cool feeling to think that people like what I create. That's the phone. One second. Yeah, I always say that I create pieces that I love, evidently. <laughs> um, but it's always such a great feeling when people love the designs as well, because I wouldn't have a business if other people didn't love them too. So that's always a really lovely feeling when people you launch something new and people like it that's always like the the worry before launching something that you're like oh i like this but is this gonna sell and actually there's one pair of earrings they've got a stamped sleepy moon face on them um and i bought the stamp because i really really loved it and i think i've only sold maybe two or three of them and every time they sell i'm like oh at least <laughs> at least there are people out there that like it it's not just me but you do get things like that that are just completely slow moving and then you get some things that sell really well and you don't really have any idea why they've kind of like connected with people in that way but yeah <laughs> that's a little bit about me I am gonna sit and finish up threading these um, and then it will be time to package which is one of my absolute favorite things so I will definitely bring you along for that too is out of the tumbler so now it's ready to package everything up. Uh, 
I've got some earrings, so I need my earring cards and the little heat sealing packets that they go in. I need some of my monthly giveaway cards. These just encourage people to sign up to my email mail list um, because I do a monthly giveaway for free jewellery. Um, and I need some of my whoops postcards um, because these are what I write my personalised messages on the back of. So this is my packaging station. I've got the jewellery here ready to package up. I've got a polishing square and polishing cloth just to give everything a final polish. I've got some of my foiled boxes for people that have ordered boxed shipping. And then I've got most of my boxes ready done by mum. She always helps with my packaging. Um, but I've got a couple more to finish here and my postcards to write out as well. that is it for the day i have finished packaging and those will be on their way to the post office in the morning and then yeah on the way to customers which is very exciting so i hope you have enjoyed seeing a little bit of my behind the scenes seeing some of the making and the work that goes on at jordan lily hq yeah in the day-to-day -day life as a jeweler or as a small business as always make sure you subscribe to kerno crafts youtube channel uh, i'm really excited to see some more of the um day in the life videos from other jewelers for me i love seeing people's workspaces um and like handy storage systems and yeah having a having a little nose in other people's studios is always really fun um so if you want to see some more of those videos do make sure to subscribe if you're interested in following along with my business or my journey um you can find my website at www.jordanlilydesigns.co.uk and i'm jordan lily designs on instagram i can usually <laughs> most of the time be found on instagram that is my social media of choice it's the place that i tend to yeah tend to hang out the most um and if you've enjoyed today or if you have any questions or anything my dms are always open so yeah i'd love to hear from you but yeah that's a wrap on my day in the life of a jeweler i hope you have enjoyed and i'll catch you around somewhere else on the internet soon bye